two things here. One, I gotta take a break from the deck project because DaVinci Resolve 20.1 is out and there's some good updates here in Fairlight that you guys need to know about. Number two, we've got ResolveCon coming up in just a couple weeks here. At the end of August here, I'm gonna be presenting some Fairlight material in two different sessions. Lots of other good sessions. You guys wanna make sure that you check that out. So if you haven't signed up for ResolveCon, I'll link it down below. You can check that out too. Sign up there. Casey's running it all. It's gonna be awesome. It's always fun every year. So I wanna see you there. You know, when the glasses come out, it's serious. DaVinci Resolve 20.1 just came out. Blackmagic delivering updates that we want as they always do because they are just awesome. Blackmagic is just awesome. Today, I'm gonna go over the Fairlight updates with you guys, just so you know what's new in Fairlight. And uh, without any further ado, let's just jump right into Fairlight. Let's go. We are in DaVinci Resolve Fairlight here. If you don't know how to get there, it's the little musical notes at the bottom. Jump you right into Fairlight. Now we can do a lot of audio stuff here in the edit page, which is where I do most of my work, but we still need to jump into Fairlight for some more advanced audio tools and features. So the first one that we have here is going to be to be able to play back our video or our audio in this case at half speed right here in Fairlight. And in order to do that, you're going to want to use a keyboard shortcut. And that keyboard shortcut by default is Shift K, and it'll play back in slow motion. Check this out. Updates here in Fairlight that you guys need to know about. So if you want to get real exact there, you could do that. And it's just going to be able to play back slow mo for you. Now you can use your J, K, and L keys. And if you hold your K key down and your L, you know, go ahead frame by frame. But if you wanted it to play through in that slow mo, use the Shift plus the K key, and that's gonna do that for you. And while we're talking about moving around the timeline, check this one out. If you hold, and this is on a Mac, Shift, Option, and Command, plus move your playhead around, it's gonna move the playhead slower for you so you can get to those exact points that you want. Now, if you're on a PC, it's gonna be Shift, Option, Control, and then it should do the same thing. So if I hold those three keys and then I grab my playhead, you can see it's gonna move just very so slightly. So if you were zoomed way in, it helps you just fine tune and get that playhead exactly where you want it. Hold those three keys and you can see it and it like moves in like micro adjustments there. So that helps if you want to get exactly in a specific spot with your playhead. The next update here is a keyboard shortcut for the focus mode. Now by default, it's set to W, but I've remapped my keys. So I mapped it to the H key, but the focus mode here in Fairlight can just do a lot of different things for you. I've got a whole video that I've made on it, but if I wanted to get it quick, I can use the keyboard shortcut. I mapped it to H. You're gonna use W unless you changed it. And it's gonna bring up this right here, the focus mode. And there's a lot of different cool things that you can do with the focus mode here. I could select just a specific range. I can raise or lower that and it's gonna automatically add keyframes. A lot of cool stuff you could do with the focus mode. So if you don't know anything about focus mode here in Fairlight, I recommend you check it out or uh, check out my other video on it. I'll try and link it up over here. The next big one here is the ability to record in 32-bit float directly into DaVinci Resolve. Now keep in mind, in order to do that, you need a microphone and a setup that can record in 32-bit float. You can't just pick any microphone and automatically make it 32-bit float. And what 32-bit float is, is it just records a wider range of dynamics for your microphone. So if things are really quiet, you can bring it back. If things get really loud in your videos, um, the chances are, in most cases, you're not gonna clip or lose audio information. So that's the benefit of 32-bit float. But let me show you how to enable it here in Fairlight. Assuming you've got the equipment to record directly into Fairlight using a device that can record in 32-bit float. So if you were doing, say, a voiceover or something, you would set it up the way you normally would. You could do it here in Fairlight, do it in the edit page with the new uh, tool that you just, well, let me just show you here in the edit page. You could click on this tool right here, automatically set it up for you right there. But in order to make sure that it's going to record in 32-bit float, you need to come into your project settings, little gear icon at the bottom right. In your project settings, come down to Fairlight, and under recording right here, we have use 32-bit float recording. So you wanna make sure that that's checked on and assuming the rest of your equipment can record in 32-bit float, you should be good to go and it should record your recordings in 32-bit float. Go ahead and hit save and you're good to go. Speaking of recording, another nice update here in Fairlight is that the waveforms of your recording are more accurate now. I know when I used to record directly in Resolve, sometimes it wouldn't even show me the waveforms. It'd just be like a solid line until I stopped recording, and then it would generate and show those waveforms. But now, in Resolve here, if I hit record, and I record again, you can see it's making the waveforms, they're accurate. 
we can see they're pretty spot on there and it does a good job of showing me accurately what is being recorded as it's being recorded. So I really like that feature for those times where I'm gonna do a voiceover or any kind of recording directly into DaVinci Resolve. And going along with the waveforms here in Fairlight, we now have the option to regenerate the waveforms. Sometimes they may get a little out of whack or if you apply certain things or effects or you do things to your waveforms, they don't update, right? I've had that happen plenty of times where it should update and look different, but it doesn't. And I'm like, what is going on? Well, now we can automatically cause that refresh to happen or to regenerate. So if you just came to any one of your clips, you select your clip, you right click, come down to clip operations and we have regenerate waveforms here. So if your waveforms aren't looking the way that you think they should, or uh, something seems out of whack, you can try regenerating those. Typically in the past, I think the only way or the best way to do that was to like delete your render cache. I think it was part of the cache. I don't know, it's a cache system thing. So being able to regenerate these is handy if it's not looking the way that you know it should. So use that if you need it. The next one here is for those who like the AI audio assistant here in DaVinci Resolve. Now this is gonna work in the edit page or in Fairlight here. I'm gonna show you in Fairlight since that's where we're at. But if we were to come to our timeline menu at the top, AI tools, audio assistant, we can select the delivery standard that we're going for. In this case, I'm going for YouTube, but you've got all these other options here. So I'm gonna say YouTube and auto mix. So this is process has been sped up a little bit here in the new update. It's gonna go through these things a little bit quicker. When you have shorter clips, it's gonna analyze it all a little bit quicker and just kind of set everything up for you a little bit quicker. So that's always welcome. I know I'm on an old iMac mini. Well, old, I guess you could say. It's an M1, uh, you know, 16 gigs of RAM, which um, has been doing good up until all this AI stuff started coming out. And it's just, it works fine still, it just takes a little bit longer. So I might actually be looking to upgrade soon to uh, a Mac Studio or something like that. But that, be, that said, the AI audio assistant does work a little bit faster here now, which is great. And going along with the update on the speed of it, there is the ability to actually see what it's doing. And this was one of my complaints from the beginning is, I don't know what it's actually doing, right? So if we were to come to any given track here, we could see it applied a bunch of different settings in here. We can see what those are now. And if I were to, for example, come to the DSer and I open this up, in the past, we only saw this and I'm like, I don't know what it's doing. I want it. What if I want to make an adjustment, right? So now we've got the option to be able to open up any one of the tools and see what it actually did. And to do that, you're going to click on this little icon right here, macro FX, and it's going to open up the window of the actual effect. So in this case, it's the DSer, but let's say if I come to my main bus here and I click on multiband compressor, we used to only get this and I'm like, okay, well, I don't exactly know what it's doing. I wanna know what it's doing as an audio guy, right? So you can click on that little icon and boom, here we go. It's gonna show you all of the different settings of what it did and how it set it. And if you wanna see what the original settings were, you just click on the reset here. It'll show you the original settings and you can kind of compare and you know see what works. If you wanna make any changes, you can go ahead and do that. So I really like that they added that in, that now we can see what's happening behind the scenes. It's not some big mystery. Uh, so for those of you who want to give it a try, but you know a little bit about audio editing and stuff like that, and you might want to make adjustments, now you can do that and understand what the AI is doing in the background. So I really like that. I think that's a good thing that they added in. The next one can come in handy if you use buses often. And in this project here, I set up a dialogue bus. So I'll have all my dialogue tracks go to that bus. And it looks like I forgot one here. So we're gonna add that in. And if I play through it, we've got ResolveCon coming up in just a couple weeks here at the end of August. You can see I have my dialogue bus right here. That's getting sent to my main bus out from DaVinci Resolve. But the update is this, that you can now just easily delete buses and you don't have to go to the menus anymore or anything like that. I can just come over here, right click and say, delete bus. Do I wanna delete the bus? Yes, I do. And boom, that bus is gone. Now you might notice if you do that and you have tracks going to that bus, we can see my bus outputs here. Now my tracks aren't going anywhere and I've got no audio coming out. So you will have to come back in here, change it so that these outputs are going back to that bus one main output, and then you should be good to go. Lots of other good sessions. You guys wanna make sure that you check that out. And not only can you delete the bus from the track headers there, you can also open up the index and now my bus is gone already, but you could come here, right click and say delete bus and you'll be able to delete it right from the index too. Index is great to move tracks around and stuff. If you haven't used it, I would recommend using that to move tracks around. It's way quicker than going move up one, move down one. Little bonus tip for you. 
Next up, we've got an improvement to the Dialog Matcher. And what the Dialog Matcher does is it's an AI tool that will match the ambience of one clip to another. So I always use my garage as a good example because it's got a little bit of reverb happening in there. But uh, let me just show you a little section of these two clips and then show you how that works. And the improvement is that now we can adjust the amount of matching that it's doing for your clip. So here are the two different clips. The first one I was outside. Two things here. One, I gotta take a break from the deck project because DaVinci Resolve 20.1 is out and there's some good updates here in Fairlight that you guys need to know about. And here's the garage clip. And we always need that little garage sample for the dialog matcher just to show clearly how it can help match the tone from different clips. Always got some good reverb here in the garage. So that's what we're going with. Let's jump into it. Okay, so let's say in this case, I wanna match my dialogue from being outside to my dialogue in the garage, which means we kinda of wanna remove some of that reverb. So let's see if it'll work here. In order to do that, I'm gonna select my clip, right click, come down to AI tools. We have dialogue matcher, and I'm gonna capture the dialogue profile. I'm gonna to come to my new clip and right click, AI tools, dialogue matcher, and we wanna apply the dialogue profile. So now let's see if it was able to do anything as far as taking out some of that reverb. And we always need that little garage sample for the dialogue matcher just to show clearly how it can help match the tone from different clips. Always got some good reverb here in the garage. So that's what we're going with. Let's jump into it. All right, so we notice it sounds a little weird, right? Maybe it's like overprocessed, and I don't know what that ghostly sound in the background is because that surely wasn't there when I was out in the garage. So if I select my clip here and we open up the inspector and you come to the effects section right here, you can see that we've got voice isolation and a wet dry mix. So let's say I pull this uh, voice isolation down because I think it's a little too heavy. And then uh, let's just play through it and I'm gonna crank up the wet dry mix and see what that does. And we always need that little garage sample for the dialogue matcher just to show clearly how it can help match the tone from different clips. Always got some good reverb here in the garage. So that's what we're going with. Let's jump into it. <laughs> well, I don't know what's up with those ghost noises. That's pretty interesting, but uh, you can adjust the wet dry mix and the voice isolation um, for the entire dialogue matcher right here in the inspector. And let's just try that in reverse. I'm gonna delete this here. Just see what this does here. That was pretty interesting. So if I come to my clip down here and I right click AI tools, dialogue matcher, capture profile, come to my clip where I'm outside, right click AI tools, dialogue matcher, apply dialogue profile. Let's see what happens if we go this way with it. Now this sounds like I'm in the garage. It adds the ambient ambience of me being in the garage. It sounds a little better. Check it out. I need some Fairlight material in two different sessions. Lots of other good sessions. You guys want to make sure that you check that out. So if you haven't signed up for Resolve. Now, if we want to see what's happening here, again, I'm going to select my clip, come to the inspector, the effects section. And again, we've got voice isolation and the wet dry mix. Let's just crank this up and see what it changes. I'll link it down below. You can check that out too. Sign up there. Casey's running it all. It sounds like it's got a little bit of uh, reverb that it added in there. If I click open my little settings, again, we just get these two knobs here. So I don't quite know everything that's going on under the hood there, but it does make it sound like it's in the garage. The other way around, I don't know why we were getting weird ghost sounds there in the garage. But you know what? These AI tools, they're a work in progress too. So I don't know what's going on there, but... Uh, I can assure you, I didn't see any ghosts while I was out there in the garage. And the last one that I have here on the list for Fairlight updates is using the shift and command key or shift and control key on a PC to click and add selection to the mixer. And I couldn't figure out what exactly that meant. Uh, if you know, drop me a comment and let me know. I tried shift and control or command clicking on stuff and I don't know, nothing happened in the mixer that, that I could tell. Um, so if you know what that does, let me know. If not, I'll keep working on it. I'll figure that out. But uh, those are the Fairlight updates here in version 20.1. A lot of good stuff. There's other great um, you know, updates here too throughout Resolve. Just a, a couple of them that, uh, you know, I looked through the sheet here that I like is a bunch of keyframe updates with our new keyframe panel. So that's always welcome. I know there were some complaints and uh, some things that people would like change when it came to the keyframes panel. So check that out. There's some good updates in there for that. And that's in the edit page. Well, I'm in the edit page when I'm using that. They added some support for built-in multi-text character level styling. So instead of all of it being the same, you can change particular characters to be whatever you want. So that's kind of cool. Just add some uh, you know, ability to be creative, really. Um, I like this one, the additional smart reframe mode 
Um, you can set it to affect your pan only, your tilt only, or both. So, you know, sometimes it would get a little out of whack or something. It's kind of like image stabilization, you know, sometimes it looks a little weird. Well, this way you can just select certain things that you want to use, like the pan, you just want it to pan, right? We don't want to tilt it or anything like that. So that's kind of cool. I like that if you're using that tool, which is great from going from, you know, wide frame like this to like vertical frame. So that's a good uh, good update there, I think, for people who need vertical video. And this one kind of li I like because I actually just answered a question on this recently about um, creating sub clips, right? I think you had to create sub clips before from uh, the viewer with in and out points, then you could drag it back into the media pool and it would create a sub clip for you. Whereas if you did it from the timeline, it would just make another copy of your whole clip, but have in and out points of that section of the clip marked on it. So now it looks like if we use in and out points, right? And in and out range on a particular clip, we should be able to drag and drop that back into the media pool and it'll make just that little section of a clip for us. So that's a good one. And it jumped out at me only because somebody asked that question earlier, like, hey, why can't I just create a sub clip and drag it from my timeline back into the media pool and have my sub clip? So that's another good one too. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff on this list here. I know a couple of the other guys out there and gals are uh, covering some of the, the updates there in version 20.1. Blackmagic's always delivering for us. I mean, I gotta give it to them. They're, they're doing an awesome job. We love you guys. Thank you so much for the updates and just giving the people what they ask for and what they want. I mean, can DaVinci Resolve get any better? I mean, it could always get better, but like, it's pretty good. Let's be honest, it's pretty good. All right, guys, that wraps up this video with all the updates here in version 20. Thank you so much for watching. Questions, comments, perhaps concern, leave it down below. Um, and yeah, with that said, you wanna learn how to edit your audio better? I got a little course up over here. You can check that out. And just so you know, all the basics are always the same. My course is always gonna be applicable. So if you want it all in one stop shop, you can check that out. We'll work through a little mini documentary together. With that said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.